Hi there. Welcome to my every other week uh, live Facebook event. And today I'm going to talk to you about um, neck pain and how to deal with neck pain and the, the possible causes of neck pain and some of the some ideas of things that you can do both at home and with the help of a practitioner in order to feel better. Uh, my name is Dr. Shiroko Sokic. I'm the owner of Heart to Heart Medical Center and the author of the book, Healing When It Seems Impossible, Seven Keys to Defy the Odds. And you know, a lot of us have neck pain these days and so, um, because so many of us spend all of our time talking on our phones and looking at our phones and, and holding our heads down while we're doing whatever or sitting in bad posture. So one of the things that really makes a difference in relation to neck pain, is of course how we sit and how we stand and how we move in our daily life and and uh, and how we hold ourselves and I have a notoriously bad posture myself for even as a child I would sit hunched over my books and reading and studying and and always like I always had this thing where I was like hold, like looking at things very closely and and trying to um, see them from a more close-up angle and also to um I th that's just how i was comfortable reading and so i know a lot of us have that sort of like look at something really closely and hold our necks down and hold our heads down and as as time goes on we get have more trouble and of course if you've had injuries to your neck that will make it worse i'm gonna um talk about posture as one of the ways that we can help ourselves is one of the things that I work on when I work out all the time is to work at holding up my posture and and when you work out is a, is a perfect time to work at holding yourself upright and working with your posture properly in order to to sustain your neck and to keep it from feeling badly so one of the things that's really important and this is um I love Chinese medicine, as you know, and so I'm going to show you this point that is really important in Chinese medicine, and it's right back here. It's right at the bra line. There's a point right there that's called the pivot of the spine, and that point is where the there's these muscles from your um, upper back called the latissimus dorsi. That's like a big group of muscles that goes out, fans across your upper back and into your shoulders and the back of your shoulders. And then the psoas muscle is also on the inside of the spine at that place and it goes down and it moves your hips. So there's that the reason it's called the pivot of the spine is is from a Chinese medicine point, but it's actually a physiological, biological meeting point of two major muscles, one that moves your shoulders and one that moves your hips. Um, and I just love how when Western and Chinese philosophy intersect. So that's one of the things that I really enjoy sharing with people. But anyway, when you like basically when in, in relation to your posture, when you hold yourself upright, kind of as if you had a string going from the top of your head straight up to the ceiling, but also from that point where the pivot of the spine is, um, you will hold then your, all of your back muscles and your neck muscles will work together in conjunction with one another. So there's this like holding yourself upright and holding your head straight and walking straight and not in a stiff way, but in a way where your movements are in sync with your whole flow of your body. Um, I love doing yoga because yoga helps you create that kind of in sync with your whole body. When you move in certain ways, it helps support that kind of thing. Yoga, Qigong, Tai Chi are all ways of helping balance the energy flow of your whole body and helping support things in working together. Your neck is not isolated. It has, you know, it has all its own muscles, but it's not isolated from the rest of your spine. So you want to think of your neck as connected to the rest of your spine and kind of think of yourself as flo excuse me, <laughs> floating when you walk so that your neck is and your head is sort of floating on the top of your spine and going through 
um, holding your head up right and looking at things straight on. Um, but if you do have neck pain, one of, in Chinese medicine, the liver regulates the smooth flow of energy in your whole body. And one of the things that the liver does, besides it regulates the ligaments and the tendons, and it deals with the emotion of anger, and um, that smooth flow of energy in your whole body, a lot of times when you are experiencing tightness in your neck or tightness in your shoulders and things like that, that is related to liver imbalance. Now, the liver in Chinese medicine does not work the same as it does in Western medicine. So it's you're not thinking about it in the same way um, because the liver also regulates the menstrual cycles. It deals with the emotion of frustration and anger and regulates your ligaments and tendons and your eyes. And it's interesting, another place where Western and Chinese philosophy coincide is recently people have been talking about the eyes and when the liver has problems, how the eyes also start to have problems, which has been the case in Chinese medicine for thousands of years. So when you have a lot of neck stiffness, you know, like where it's really just hard to move your neck and it feels like it's really stiff, that usually has something to do with the liver imbalance. So, um, of course, because I do acupuncture, I would recommend having acupuncture because acupuncture will help release the, that stiffness and help the liver energy flow more smoothly. But also yoga and Pilates and Qigong and Tai Chi, all of those kinds of motions where there's a way of getting the body to flow are very, very helpful. And I'm going to show you a couple of very specific exercises and a, to and a tool that I use um, just, for, just to help you um, have some fun. Um, so one of the things that I do, because I do sit at my computer a lot during the day, and I found this, um, this neck brace thing that I think is really helpful. And what it does is you um, put it around your neck like this. Uh, and I can share a link with you if you want to get it yourself. And then you tie, it's kind of like having a blood pressure cuff around your neck. You um, inflate it. So you, you t tighten it up like that and then you inflate it. It takes a while to inflate, but what it does is it opens up like back here. It inflates and it tightens and it helps stretch your neck out in a gentle way so you don't overdo it. I like to do this at night before I go to sleep. So you, you inflate it and, um, and then you can lay down on it or you can sit with it upright and it helps support. But more importantly, you can inflate it as much as you want to, but it, it helps stretch your neck. And we tend to get compressed in our necks some, a lot because we sit like this or we crunch up our shoulders and things like that. So here I am inflating it. And, and it starts to, to create a little bit of stretch. It's very gentle. It doesn't do too much. And, and it feels really good because you can kind of lean up against it and kind of hold yourself upright a little bit. And if you just do that for a few minutes, you know, not even every day, um, it will help open up the flow of energy in your neck and it'll help open up um, the tightness. So that's one thing that I do. And then there's a whole bunch of different stretches um, that, that I also recommend. So one of the things, like especially if you have tightness kind of on the side, very gently, you take your hand and you kind of gently pull it like that. And the other hand is kind of, you can sit on your other hand and like hold it down and then gently stretch. You never want to overdo it with your neck. You don't want to yank on your neck or pull it too hard because it's very sensitive. So you want to just gently pull it over to the side. And again, if you do this every day, it will be very helpful. And you do the other side, again, you sit on your hand and then you pull opposite and keep your shoulder down and you just kind of pull it gently over to the side like this. And you might feel some tightness in the ligaments over here. Just gently stretch. You don't want to, again, you don't want to overstretch them. You want to be careful with your neck. You want to just gently move things around. 
And then here's a couple of other little gentle movements. And like, especially if you tend to get headaches, back here at the very, like the very top of the neck, right up in here, people get jammed up in here a lot. And so what I recommend for that is this, again, hold, sit, sit up very, very straight, and then hold your head like this, where your chin is parallel to the floor, and very slowly do this little figure of eight. It's a very small movement and you can hold your chin while you're doing it but what you're doing is a very small figure of eight that and it's just just it's opening up right here at that junction between your skull and the top of your neck where those ligaments get really really tight kind of this like this it's very good for headaches don't forget to breathe when you're doing it I'm doing it while I'm talking to you and I'm not breathing so don't do that. So just very gently, figure of eight like that. You could do it for even like 30 seconds or a minute, and then you can go the other way. You see, it's not a big movement. And then you can stop and take a big deep breath and just see how it feels. Just see how that feels. And again, while you're doing it, you wanna have your chest be open and your shoulders be relaxed, you know, as much as possible. Have the whole of your body sort of experiencing the, the event that you're doing for yourself. Another thing that you can do, <laughs> which I used to do in Pilates a lot, so you can get one of those soft balls that, um, but I'm not gonna lay on the floor and show you this, so you're gonna have to imagine laying on the floor and having a ball under your head, one of those little inflatable balls that's not too big. And then you can lay on that ball and you just rotate your nose. Just so imagine it's the tip of your nose and you go like this, like an inch, tracing a small circle. One way and tracing a small circle. Other way. You can do that laying on the floor, like on a on a little a little inflatable ball, or you can do it sitting up in a yoga pose, where you can sit cross-legged and just go. And then a bigger plate. Again, using your nose as the circle. So the circle is going around with your nose as the guide. So instead of focusing on your neck moving, you're focusing on drawing the circle with your nose. And then you go the other way, bigger, bigger plate. And then you can go really big plate, like a dinner plate. And then go the other way, dinner plate. and slowly and gently, don't overdo it. Just a few of those kind of movements every day and then really focusing on your posture, keeping yourself upright, holding your head up straight when you walk, when you, imagine when you walk like models walk into a room, right? They walk into a room and they're holding themselves tall. When you do that, it actually makes a difference, not only in how your neck feels, but also in your height as you get older. Because you know, a lot of people tend to get a little more compressed as they get older and they start to shrink in their height. And um, if you walk, holding yourself sort of upright from the top of your head and, and, and holding your posture in an open, open, straight up kind of way, you will find that A, you feel better and B, that uh, you don't shrink in your height. So you don't, like your height doesn't get smaller. Years ago, when I was first starting yoga, I was in my 20s and um, was first starting to do yoga. I think I started out at five foot six and after doing yoga for a few months, I was actually five foot seven. So you can actually get taller. Um, and, I, and I haven't measured my height in a long time, but uh, but I know you, that you're less likely to shrink in height if you are always stretching and always working on your posture and holding yourself upright. So imagine a string 
from the top of your head, going straight up and walking yourself in a smooth way. There are several other things that you can do besides exercises um, in order to support your neck. Well, of course, there's chiropractic. Um, and again, with chiropractic, personally, I prefer not to have that high velocity where they crack your neck. Um, if you have a chiropractor who works with uh, an activator, you can do that, or you can use uh, gentle traction. You can do uh, certain muscle movements in order to adjust the neck. So there's many ways to adjust the neck. Um, some people may actually be okay with the high velocity, but there are certain health conditions where you don't want to do high velocity adjustments. So you wanna pay attention to that if you are gonna have one. Um, you have acupuncture, you can have massage, you can do this thing with the inflatable uh, blood pressure cuff on your neck. Well, not blood pressure cuff, but the inflatable neck stretching thing. And then um, there are also supplements that will support uh, your neck feeling better. There are some Chinese herbs that actually help the flow of energy through your, um, your ligaments and tendons, which is related to the liver, again. And um, those, uh, there's one formula called Free and Easy Wanderer, which makes sense because it's all about flow and getting things moving. Um, there are also things like turmeric um, and uh, MSM or glucosamine sulfate. Some people do really well with that because it helps the ligaments and tendons, again, in the neck or in other places in the body, it helps them be more juicy. You wanna drink plenty of water and stay hydrated, especially in times when it's hot. Um, always um, uh, make sure that you uh, get enough electrolytes. Magnesium helps relax the ligaments and tendons. So electrolytes are like sodium and potassium like salts. Um, and magnesium is a mineral, but it helps relax the muscles and the ligaments and tendons. And so that can be very helpful for your neck if you feel like you have a lot of tension in your neck. And, um, and most of all, you wanna release stress. So stress is one of the reasons that we wear our neck, our shoulders as earrings if we walk around like this where it's really, we get all tense and stressed out. Um, one of the ways, one of the things I realized years ago was that I was walking around, could I do acupuncture, as you know, and and I go from room to room to room all day. And I notice that one, I'm not breathing. I'm just like working and not breathing. And two, I'm like walking around like this in constant tension, not because I'm worrying about anything, but just because I'm not paying attention to my body. So consciousness and awareness and paying attention to your body really makes a difference. And so, <laughs> You can take a deep breath every few minutes, you know, just take like a deep breath. And I don't know if you have one of these phone or watches that tells you what to do, you could have it give you an alert, take a deep breath. When you take a deep breath, you can't have tension in those places in your body. So you take a big deep breath, it'll relax your body. If you keep doing that all day long, so, they talk about wellness being a series of ha of habits that you repeat over time. And that's what I advise is that you do these things every day. You stretch your neck every day. You do the little plate um, rotation. You maybe take some supplements that support your ligaments being relaxed. And you do some mindful movement so that your your body relaxes more. Hold your posture up straight. Walk tall and when you meet with other people, take a big deep breath and relax your body so that when that you stay in that state of relaxation, then your neck can't get tense. I hope you have a wonderful day and uh, I don't see any questions posted in the comments yet. So, and thank you for the heart. That's very sweet. I appreciate it. Um, and uh, yeah. Okay, so uh, I hope you have a wonderful day, and if you have any questions, just post them in the comments, and I'll be happy to answer them. Have a wonderful day. Bye.